Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth and today's topic is about EV charging station stocks. So we know that EV has become very popular over the years and uh, many investors have also caught on. So now um, we are looking at the infrastructure built up to support a much larger fleet of EVs. Okay, so that's where the EV charging station stocks come about. And the good thing is that we have seen a lot more of these EV charging station stocks uh, uh, merging with specs and getting listed. And that makes it possible for individual investors to get a piece of this uh, EV charging station infrastructure play um, as an investment. All right, so let's begin. The usual disclaimer, pause and read it if you need to. Okay, these are some stats that I gathered. Uh, average a US car owner drive about 50 km per hour uh, per day and Europeans drive uh, between 40 to 80 km per day. And um, the EV range have increased tremendously over the years due to the improvement in battery technology. And nowadays you can get 386 km per full charge um, to get that range. And which means if you take a look at this, right, um, each day the typical range of an EV is more than enough to cover um, the distance, right? And um, uh, for daily driving, for most people, okay? And that is why majority of the EV charging happens at home. As about 80% of the EV charging happens at home. So day-to-day um, -day commute, an uh, EV is more than sufficient. It is only when uh, probably you travel longer distance between cities, between states, that's where um, you would need some of these public charging points in order to lengthen that range of that EV. Okay, uh, I did some number crunching, um, um, assuming that we are in a city like Singapore, where you know the it's a very small place, so an EV range probably cover uh, the entire Singapore easily uh, if you want to drive around uh, the whole day. All right, and currently there's about one million vehicles in Singapore. And uh, it is supported by 57 feeding stations, right? Not a lot. And, uh, you know, it's pretty fast. Just five minutes can fill up gasoline, okay? That's the current infrastructure now. And let's say we're going to move into the, the electronic ve uh, electric vehicle um, mode. How would the infrastructure change, okay? So uh, what I see is that you probably need a lot more charges, all right? And given that a uh, full range is enough for you to travel around Singapore the whole day, that means that um, the need for public charging is not so crucial, but overnight charging at a car park lot near your residence um, is probably the preferred mode. Okay, And when we look at the, the charging at home, if you live in a landed property, there's no problem because um, you can buy a charger fixed at home and you can just plug it in your garage. Right, so, so um, sixty-eight thousand landed properties would have this problem. Uh, of course, they have to pay for the charges themselves, and uh, typically it takes about overnight to charge, right? A few hours, okay, for full charge. That is like a normal charger. Um, they are fast charger as well, and we can charge much faster within an hour. You can get maybe um, a two hundred km kind of range or hundred fifty km kind of range. Um, but uh, I think that more economically, right, uh, most of these charges will be the normal ones, okay? And that means that you need to extend these charging points to uh, car parks that are uh, in condominiums, apartments, or even uh, our public housing. So if that's the case, to support the 1 million vehicles, you need another 932,000 charging points, okay? And a normal charger average about $5,000 uh, $5, on the lower range. Okay, it can it can go up to ten thousand, fifteen thousand. Uh, fast charger will probably cost like sixty thousand. So the price range varies quite a fair bit, right? But if we look at lower range, that means to fit up the entire Singapore um, to be EV enabled, that will be about four point seven billion. This is just the charges alone. We haven't talked about um, some other parts like how do you lay the cables, um, uh, all the labor, all the material costs. Okay, uh, but minimally, that's that's what probably we're looking at. Um, it is not an astronomical sum, but uh, and especially if it's spread over years of investment. Okay, so I do think that the possibility of uh, switching to EV, uh, a large percentage of it, oh, can happen in the next few years. Yeah, at least in Singapore. Okay, and let's look at the bigger countries like say US, um, where we talk about just now that, you know, if you travel to another city, the distance is too far for the range of a uh, full charge in an EV. It can be maybe a thousand km, and that means that you need at least three charges um, to, to hit there. And uh, that is why 
uh, some of these countries would need to spend uh, beyond just uh, those kind of residence charging stations, but extend to along the highways, the expressway, the freeways, and uh, so that the, the travelers can charge along their journey, right? And um, that will involve uh, government spending. Okay, this is an infrastructure spend. That's what I, I, I would see so. And there are currently about 41,000 EV charging stations in US, okay? And fewer than 5,000 are fast charger, which means um, even in terms of the charging technology, most of them are the slow chargers, okay? <laughs> you spend a few hours at a rest station uh, to get your EV charged before you can continue your journey. It's not the most efficient way to do it. Uh, uh, as opposed to a gasoline station, right? You just stop there, five minutes, three hours, you can continue your journey, right? You're gonna add hours, okay? If it's not a fast charger, right? So even the technology, I think that it has to improve. Otherwise, adoption for um, those kind of uh, long journey travelers uh, for EVs will not be that high, okay? And good news is that the U.S. government, or at least uh, President Biden, has proposed, okay, it's still at the proposal stage, uh, to spend at least $15 billion to roll out electric vehicle charging station. And the goal is 500,000 charging station by 2030. Okay, so at least you can see that um, the government is also uh, pushing for it, right? Pushing the, the uh, shift towards a greener way of uh, transportation, all right? And I want to talk about some of these uh, public charging station models, business models, okay? So the market has not agreed or selected a particular business model to operate in. So end up you have a few models that's coming up, drum up by different companies, trying to uh, guess what the market wants, right? Eventually, I think you will gravitate to one business model or the most two. Right, because that's how um, the society vote for things. Eventually, okay, you choose the most economical uh, solution that gives you the most value at the end of the day. Okay, so let's talk about a few business models. I have three um, in this uh, uh, presentation. Right, there could be more. Okay, but I just want to give you some idea how these companies are drumming out all these business models. So, for example, Tesla is one of the leading. Uh, one with a uh, big network of uh, chargers. Okay, it has twenty thousand superchargers. These are the fast chargers, right? Um, you don't wait for hours to get a decent charge on your on your cars. But these superchargers are only exclusive to Tesla vehicles. So you can see, um, they went the more exclusive way, right? If there are more of these exclusive charging stations, um, the more likely you are, or you are more assured that you can charge your vehicles anywhere in US. You are more likely to buy a Tesla vehicles. Okay, so that is how uh, exclusive model will work. Okay, and there's no long queue, right? Because uh, other brands of EVs cannot charge at a supercharger, a Tesla supercharger. Uh, if there is a normal uh, Tesla charger, not a supercharger, um, other brands can use adapters. Okay, and with some limitation in charging uh, uh, their, their EVs, there is non Tesla brand. Okay, but for superchargers, it's exclusive to the Tesla vehicles, right? And model two is um, it, it treat the vehicle, okay, the EV like a battery, okay, because it essentially it has a battery, right? So a battery stores charge, okay, it stores electrical energy, and uh, what this NUF, okay, this is the company came up with this vehicle to grid model where uh, it is a bi-directional kind of charging. That means the grid can charge your car and your car can also sell the electricity in the battery back to the grid, okay? So how it works is like, um, maybe you, you, you stay in a house with solar panels and in the day you, you generate a lot of uh, uh, electricity, right? And then you, you store this generated electricity in your car. Then at night when there's no more sun, you know, uh, that's where your, your power generation is weaker. Okay, you can sell back this um, um, electric energy that's stored in a car back to the grid, right? Because those periods will also be peak hours, right? Where the electricity prices will go up. That's where you can even defray some of your charging costs uh, by selling back all this electricity, that spare electricity that you have. Okay, so that is another model, all right? That's uh, from NUF. And the third model is from Volta. So uh, charging are free. Okay, for drivers, you can just plug it in and what they do is sell ad spaces just like Google. They give you free search uh, 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 capability and then they sell advertisement to advertiser, right? To get your attention. Okay, so that is another model uh, from Volta. 
all right so uh i don't know which one would eventually uh uh, the society will gravitate towards right but it's interesting to see how um, they are thinking about uh, this kind of uh, 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 EV charging kind of um, business models okay so I also have uh, came up with this table right uh, gather some of the, the data for different kind of uh, uh, charging station okay and I rank them in terms of the revenue all right, I rank them in terms of the revenue from the highest to the lowest. Okay, uh, you can also see the number of charging stations that's available. Right, uh, so these are numbers I just pick up uh, from all sorts of places. Okay, as much as possible, I get it from uh, the information from source. Okay, from their website, from their disclosure, from the presentation, etc. Okay, so um, I I found that there are about six that are currently listed that means these six you can invest in them as a retail investor okay most of them are listed in fact all of them are listed in us right so charge point is one of the largest if not the largest by revenue so far okay it has a uh, 30,000 uh, charging stations okay mainly in us and uh, netherlands right because europe is um, that has overtaken china to become the uh, uh, most uh, ev adopt kind of a region right so you start to see a lot more european companies uh, uh sorry european countries appearing um whether is it in the ev sales numbers or or whether is it on the uh, ev charging stations okay increasingly you'll see that uh, in the next few years and uh, revenue is 147 million that is uh, actual revenue right in 2021 which isn't very high okay and the revenue growth rate was even more disappointing just a slight one percent growth and this was uh, done with a, a merger with a spec okay this is a spec merger okay this is post merger already um switchback energy right was the previous name of this uh, merger all right then volta which i show you just now this is the one that sells the advertisements okay they give you free charging it only have 1500 uh, charging station mainly in US revenue is hundred million dollars okay so you can see that uh, selling ads actually gen can really generate a lot more revenue right relative to the number of charging stations that's that's out there okay and uh, the the compound annual growth rate for the revenue um, is estimated to be hundred percent right but if it's estimated I'll just give you a pinch of salt okay because it tends to be rosier uh, uh, than reality Right, this is also going under a spec merger. It's not completed yet uh, with the Tortis um, acquisition uh, corp. Right, it's going to be uh, merging soon. Okay, and the third one is EV Box. Um, the revenue I could get was only FY19. Okay, so uh, it might have grown a lot, right? Because if let's say it double, uh, it grows really at 123 percent. It probably have overtaken Charge Point in terms of revenue right but uh, i don't have the data so this is just some assumption okay and it is likely so because it has the most number of uh, charging station 235,000 with over 70 countries okay so i suspect uh, they might be the biggest already if we have the latest revenue figures right this is also uh, a spec merger okay from the private equity uh, firm tpg right it's going to form into evb and the fourth one is EVgo. Uh, revenue is very small, which is 18 million in uh, 21.9. And estimated growth rate is 41%. Right? Either they are humble or they are less competitive okay? <laughs> than say Volta or EV Box, where where they are they are uh, estimated growth rate uh, is like half of the us. Okay, this is also under a spec merger. Right? Mainly US, very small, 800 um, uh, charging station. Uh, Blink. Um, this did not go for any spec merger. They just IPO by themselves. Okay, a few years ago, right? With twenty three thousand charging station, six point two million revenue is also very small. But at least they are going fast, right? This is real figure, one hundred twenty one percent. Uh, from twenty one nine to twenty twenty. Okay, so it's not an estimation, right? Hopefully, it can continue to grow and um um increase their revenue from that. And the last one, Nuf. I uh, couldn't find any data on the charging stations that's there. Okay, probably um, still in very infancy stage because looking at the revenue is the lowest, just three point five million in twenty one nine. All right, going at hundred and twenty nine percent. Okay, so maybe we'll give it another year. It's close to what Blink is at currently. So this is also a spec. Okay, I think this is the newborn acquisition corporation. Right, so you can see most of these charging stations they got listed uh, through a spec. 
Okay, the specs are, 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 are for some reason they are very into this charging station uh, or EVs in general. All right, to, to bring them up to speed. But um, you can see the the economic model. Uh, if you add them all together, they are not even a billion revenue for the entire year yet. Okay, so um, um, still very very early at this stage. All right. So what's my thoughts about? investing in this um, uh, EV charging station. Okay, so first of all, we can definitely acknowledge, right? Everybody can see that EV chargers are very critical. The charging station are very critical infrastructure uh, for EV adoption. Okay, whether is it charging at home, whether is it charging public charging stations to extend your journey uh, range, uh, they're all critical because that is the number one fear. If I buy a EV, but I can't charge it, what's the use, right? I can't really use it. And if let's say the charging station is not in a convenient place, I will be spending a lot more time uh, maintaining the car, charging the car than to, to really ease my way of life, right? So uh, buying a car is supposed to give you convenience, not add extra burden. So that's why uh, all these EV charging stations are very critical infrastructure. Okay, you need to get this right before the adoptions can really come up. And second is that we have seen through a few uh, business models and um, there isn't one best one because uh, the market seems like they haven't chosen yet. Many of these charging station businesses are still haven't take off, taken off uh, very low revenue at this point in time. And you can see there are many companies which means uh, they are highly competitive, right? So as an investor, I don't like a uh, very competitive space, uh, super uncertain when business models are not validated. I, I do think that at this point, if you want to go in, it's very risky. Okay, um, a lot of things are not sorted out yet. Okay, of course, some people argue if you wait until everything is sorted out, then you know, uh, uh, it's too late. Okay, um, but I will still, I will still prefer to err on the safe side, right? So I would likely not invest in any of these uh, EV charging station stocks. And then the third one is, um, as as I mentioned as well, um, I think that the revenue or the validation of the business model is not there yet. Okay, and we also have seen uh, those uh, high growth rates were just projection, right? Some have achieved it, but some are just projection. Um, yeah, they are usually rosier than what uh, eventual reality will sit in. Okay, so I do think that um, um, there's too much optimism on their growth part of the house. And uh, the, the last thing is that um, because this is an infrastructure business, right? And I, I'm just worried about that. Uh, they may not be able to capture the economic value of uh, building out this infrastructure. So this gives me that, um, uh, how to say, allude to the telecom infrastructure, right? Like your telcos have built out like 5G infrastructure, but that doesn't mean that they can capture the econ economic value out of it. Right, uh, government will be pushing for it, but it's more like a public good than a uh, true profitable business. Okay, so with all these reasons, I feel that um, it, these EV charging stations um, are not good businesses for me to invest in. They are more of a public good. They are necessary, right? But the economic value of the entire EV movement are unlikely to be captured by the EV charging stations. Right. So that's all I have. Uh, you can agree or disagree with my view, right? Join the channel, um, like this video, um, give me some encouragement, all right? <laughs> and if you have any comments or any things you want to add on with this uh, EV charging station, feel free, right? Happy to have a discussion. Leave the comment down below, all right? See you the next time. Cheers.